guys, Jessica Henry here. I'm super happy to be here with you guys today. I always enjoy these live videos and I hope that you guys enjoy this one. It's kind of a fun idea. I thought, you know what, I, even yesterday I wasn't really entirely sure what I was going to do to go live so I thought this might be the best idea because it's really, it's been too hot and today it's going to rain and thunderstorm that why don't we just stay in the studio and um, I've been doing a lot of still lifes lately, so I thought maybe I would do a landscape working from photos. So, what I have going on here is, since a lot of people have, you know, gone on vacations over the summer and um, we've been collecting beautiful photos all year, I thought it might be pretty interesting to do. Um, I went to Colorado this summer, and this is the picture that I'll be doing. I, it, there's kind of a glare on it, so I won't be able to show you it very much from... Um, while I'm working, but I will. I'm actually going to pull the camera a lot closer. So um, good to see you guys out there. I'm really excited to be here, and so I think that we're going to have a good time. So I'm going to jump in and um, get going on this. And I, I've added a couple links to this post ahead, up above if you guys want to take a look. Um, like I said, we were in Colorado this summer, and um, there's uh, well, there's a link up above that has our newest release. Um, of our from it's from Mount Mesas to Mountaintops and it's a really great deal check it out lots to offer in that it's all plein air seven plein air videos and it's a pre-release offer and then I also have a link to um, our enrollment in Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts it doesn't mean you're enrolled if you click at it just just click there and see what it's all about good to see you guys too um, all right so I am excited for this and I want to get going I it's been a long time since I've done an actual landscape from a photo. I'm always out doing plein air and you're kind of rushed for time so I'm excited just kind of pull up my chair and relax and get my computer here. So if you work on computers it's a really good idea to do it because you can get the vibrant rich color and you can zoom way in on those faraway places so I, I personally really love working on computers. I've done the little photos and kind of have them taped to the side of my easel here and you're kind of like staring at it and it's kind of frustrating. So anyway computers are great. And I have it actually sitting on my still life stand, so it's about eye level with my um, easel, so that works out there too. I'm sorry there's a glare behind me. I'm always fighting with the lighting in my studio. Depending on the time of day or what cloud is passing over the sun, I end up with miscellaneous glares. So I settled on this because I think the lighting on my canvas is going to be pretty good for film. So we have to deal with that. And I'll pull you in closer so you can look at it better. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you a little bit real quick about what I have that I'm going to be working with. Uh, <laughs> good to see you guys. So this is my palette. I'm going to use all my regular colors today that I always use, even for plein air. And that is one of the things I try to do when I'm working on a painting, a landscape painting in the studio. Oops, I lost my picture. Is to keep it as close as possible to what I would do in the field if it was a plein air study. So regular plein air palette. I've got my um, titanium white, cad yellow. I have cad red on from the other day doing a still life. Um, I don't think I'll use it for this because there's really no red in this landscape. Um, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I still have some cobalt violet on again from the other day doing a video. I don't foresee that I'll use it either. Um, uh, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, and alizarin crimson. I might use a teeny bit of that. And then I have my little container of linseed oil. That's all I use for that. Then I have my Gamsol on a little hook right here on my easel, just a little bucket. And then for my canvas, this is a linen canvas. It is a 12 by 16. I forgot what size it was. Um, and what I did to it is I put a tone on it of, this is burnt sienna and yellow ochre. I, I used just a teeny bit of ultramarine blue and then I altered course as I was toning the canvas because I thought, you know, I don't want any ultramarine blue grayish on there. <laughs> um, I wanted sort of this glow underneath so that as I paint this landscape, some of that glow comes through and it has almost that tonalist quality. So I'm going to play with that. So let's see what happens. Um, I may be just as surprised as anyone else. <laughs> um, okay, so brushes. Well, I've got my palette knife. I might play with this a little bit today. And then um, I just have kind of a hodgepodge mixture. I'm going to start out with, well, I toned the canvas with a larger brush. This is a size 8 flat. <clears throat> My go-to brushes are just um, flat size 6 or 4. I do have a little size 2 in here, and I may grab some smaller ones as I work on some more of the detail. I'm not really rushed for time because I am starting an hour earlier than what I said. So maybe we'll take our time here. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thanks so much, guys. 
Okay, so then what I'm going to do is start out with um, a thumbnail sketch because my premise for this video today was on um, working with the distortions and problems from photos. And part of those problems, I always say there's three main problems with working from photos. Color distortion, value distortion, and then the drawing distortion. And in this case, there's no drawing distortion because it's just a landscape. But if it was, you know, a person or a horse or whatever, you would see, like, my hand is not that big. Okay, photos distort. And so that's an issue we have to deal with. In this case, um, actually, and one of the reasons I picked this picture is because the values look really good. <laughs> so I have to try really hard to remember what it was like when I was there. I did do a plein air in a very similar uh, location, but that painting sold, so it's gone. So, but um, <laughs> uh, otherwise, I would be using it as reference. So when you have a plein air painting that you've done from a specific location, you take another photos, and you have those other photos back at your studio, you, studio use that plein air painting as a color reference um, because your colors and values do get distorted. So, all right, different wash tones for different subject matter. Yes, um, yep, that's, uh, and, and somebody asked that in um, our Renaissance Academy, and I don't recall that I addressed it, why I select different colors, or why anybody would select different colors to tone their canvas. I knew one lady who toned her canvases in like a magenta before painting, and some of that um, bright pink kind of tone uh, shone through the paint, and it almost had an electrical quality. It was really cool. So you can choose really whatever color to tone your canvas that you want. I want um, sort of this glow because I remember the time of day that this picture was taken and it was approaching sunset and so there was this glow that started to make it feel like a tonalist painting so I really wanted to capture that with this. Um, I've done foggy paintings where my tone underneath is like a lavender because some of that would show through in the, um, the thinner layers and so those are just things that I'm kind of cognizant of. All right, so. As I said, dealing with the different issues and drawing um, values in this, my focus to begin is with the thumbnail sketch, and that always streamlines your process. And you know, some of the most seasoned professionals that I have known still do thumbnail sketches, so it's not something where, oh, only beginners do that. Everybody does this to streamline their process in the field. Some do, some don't, but a lot of people do. So I'm going to do that real quick here, and I think I can kind of hold this a little bit like this so you can see. In my plein air videos, I do the same kind of thing where um, you can work from the outside like this, where, oh, you can't really see. Okay, so there's a rectangle, and then you begin with your composition within that boundaries. And so I'm going to do that, and then I'll show you another way you can do your thumbnails. So if I start with my trees kind of in this general area, I'm looking at the mountains, if they're kind of in this area, and they kind of come up this side. And then I've got this darker value. What you're doing with a thumbnail sketch is you're mapping out where your different values and compositional structures are going to end up living on your canvas. So there's some darker masses in here. And you can see I'm just keeping it really kind of loose and sort of um, just generalized. I'm going to actually have to stand, hi guys, really close. <laughs> because um, there, oh, it seems like there's a glare no matter what I do. So this kind of is that general idea. And then I've got this nice swatch of bright grass in the front. And I want to play with that. I don't want the road going right down to this corner. So I'm kind of, you know, paying attention to some of these compositional things. And uh, knowing that this is going to be a darker value. The trees in here are going to be a little bit lighter. And then the mountains as they live in here. And then I'll use these clouds to help sort of focus the eye which way I wanted to go. If I just keep everything going in this direction, it's going to um, maybe feel like it's leaning too much. So I'm going to maybe make the clouds go this direction. So I might reverse what I have going on in the photo for those. All right, so those are, the f those are fine for my blob shapes, my value shapes. So I'm mapping in now just kind of the three main values, maybe four or five, just depending on as I see fit. And um, it doesn't have to be super complex, but like, okay, so there's that. I, I don't like how even they are, but this is a more interesting shape than what I have drawn. And if I wasn't holding it up like this and taking my time sitting down, I might have caught some of these things. So let's go up like this. Can you see? Okay, good, you can still see that. Okay, so maybe that's more interesting. Okay, now the lighter 
tone back here is that secondary value, and we've got that down here too. And then the sky is going to be my lightest value. So I just have these basic shapes going on here with my thumbnail sketch, and that's really all that it's about, is you need to figure out what is going to be an interesting format. So another way that I've told people that it's totally acceptable to do um, thumbnail sketches to work from the inside and not start with your boundaries. So, you know, figure out where you want things to kind of live in this loose sort of format and then decide where the boundaries of your canvas are going to be within that. And that's totally acceptable and many times I do that instead. So, I'm going to keep this right here so I can observe it while I get started. And you want to keep your mouse handy if you do work on your computer because you want to wiggle it because it'll like shut off. All right, so there's that. Now I get to sit, so I'm gonna pull my chair up and pull you guys closer. Get real close here. And that way you can see without straining your eyes. Hopefully you have bigger computers at home and can um, see a little better. I'm gonna still try to see your comments, but it might be a little bit challenging, but I think that we're in a good location from this. And, um, if there's anything exciting going on on my palette, I'll lift it up and show you what's happening there. So I always like to begin with a little bit smaller brush and um, only for drawing in the, um, the design. And I'm going to be referring back to my um, composition in my thumbnail sketch. So this is a size 2 and dipping it in my Gamsol over here. And you're not going to miss anything on my palette. I'm just taking some ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. Maybe heavier on the burnt sienna side. Again, just keeping with that um, tonalist feel. I'm going to be adding a lot more whites and colors and things, but I just want to um, get this in place. So back to my sketch. Again, holding my brush very loosely. I had mapped in the trees. And now I'm going to kind of think a little bit more carefully about these different contours and shapes than I did when I was doing the sketch. Okay, so that's kind of where those are going to live in there. And I've got it coming down. The horizon will be about in this general area of green. And um, like we've got these interesting contours of bushes and things that are in here and then um, this this is just a really straight line in nature and I don't want it that straight so oh, let's alter it a little I mean it's my world so you know we can change as much as we want <laughs> um, so this this photo actually I wanted to tell you while I'm laying this in <clears throat> was taken as we were leaving um, which we found out later was Ralph Lauren's property. <laughs> it was a, it, there was an access road on a national park um, out there in Colorado, and we didn't realize that the, the private road that ran through the public land actually belonged to Ralph Lauren, Lauren which we found out later was uh, his property. So, very exciting. So, anyway. <laughs> This is a main road, and of course it is stick straight, but I want to curve it and maybe bring it this way so that it kind of comes down and looks interesting. So we're going to do that. And again, it kind of leads the eye in and back behind these bushes, and we have that feeling of mystery. Like that. I always get about this point in these demos and I think, oh, was this a really um, ambitious <laughs> effort for a, a, a demo? Because there's a lot in here. But uh, you know what? We'll plow through it and uh, see what happens. I like the location of these elements in this, so um, I think it's going to be all right that way. We've got the hill coming down this way. Everything's kind of converging to this spot, so maybe I'll move some of these mountains a little bit over this way. And um, they're really faint. And of course, right now, I'm really not doing too much with my, you know, working out values and um, distortions that way because everything's, I'm just mapping it in. Like that. So 
there's different colors back in here. One thing I don't want is, is in compositional anomalies is to have two lines intersect. So we've got this tree here, and I don't want the hills behind it coming right in line with it. So I can either make the trees go above it or below it. And I think I'll just go a little bit below it just to make that not line up so perfectly. It's kind of silly. So I'm seeing mountains back in here. And then I think these trees, I want them to feel like they're really towering. So we're going to bring them as close to the edge of the canvas as I feel comfortable. And I'm thinking about Corot. It just reminded me of the um, Corot-type evening. And uh, the way that, the, I guess they're cottonwoods, were just gently blowing. They had this really soft, diffused look to them. And uh, so that is what I want to just bear in mind while I'm approaching this. So I've got tree clumps and clusters over here, which I can add all those details later. Work on that. Okay, so I'm content with where this is heading at this point. All right. Two. I'm just kind of get some of these directional lines down here just to help get that feel of the lay of this land going like that. Um, and then this will be a darker value. All right, now I'm grabbing a little bit bigger brush. This is a size six. And I want to start establishing a few of these value notes. So I'm taking, um, again, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to establish where some of these darker passages are in here. And I don't want it to go as black as possible, but I am thinking about this being my darkest dark in the painting. So I'm just laying this down in just a very simple but interesting arrangement, bearing in mind that everything up close to us is darker, stronger, richer color, more contrast, and everything as it fades gets lighter and lighter, regardless of what's happening in your photo too, because a lot of times, like when I look at this photo here, I'll turn it over. See this clump of trees right here? That's every bit as dark as that dark. And in real life, you would never have seen it that, that dark. That would have already appeared lighter than this because it's going back so far. So you just have to be aware that those anomalies happen. All right, so keeping that in mind, what did I do? Why I made this dark as dark as from here to here. So I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. That's better. So again, that's going to be my darkest dark, and I've established that now. Next, I've got sort of a clump over here, and I'm kind of comparing it about to the same plane value as that one. So in our mind, we will accept that this clump of trees is in the same value or um, area plane as this, this passage right here. And it'll also push this in front of that, if that makes sense. So while I'm working these uh, sort of passages out, it, I'm also kind of refining the shape and, and form of those things a little bit more too. So comparing this to this area, keeping that the same. Okay, now wiping my brush off, I'm just gonna um, map out some of the darkers Back, darker passages back in here, again, keeping this in mind, that value. Always comparing values. All right. Now, part of the problem with this tone canvas is that my sky, of course, is too dark. So I can, oops, I can wipe my brush off like that really well and just rub it out like this if I really want to get some of those color notes. Oh, just so you know, I had just toned this canvas right before filming today, so it wasn't pre-toned and dried. And then I'm taking my paper towel and can kind of wipe that off. What this is going to do is sort of help establish my value family. And I might even go lighter than that. 
all this way, just rubbing it off. And that's just bringing that gamsol down into there in between the trees. Um, over here. Yep, left-handed. <laughs> oh, I forgot. It's Facebook Live, so everything looks, it looks like I'm left-handed, but I'm not. All right, so let's get some of this value up here. I like how the value of the sky is mostly white up in here, and that'll have sort of an interesting cascading effect of a lighter value. So that is just a quick way you can establish um, your, I guess you'd call it an underpainting. Okay. So there we go. Getting rid of that paper towel. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is start from the background and work my way to the foreground. Everything else in here is pretty much middle tone with the exception of the few little ch -ch -ch things that I've put in. So now it's just a matter of color and um, color temperature. And what I mean by color temperature is, is it cool or is it warm? And uh, again, in a photograph, you don't get as much of that understanding of what's cool and what's warm. Um, I could show you, but I don't think that you'll be able to see from the distortion of the, um, of the, the computer lens, because I know the mountains are all like washed out. But you can see in the grass down here, it is a little warmer. And so, oh, come on. Um, sorry. Now I'm doing this left-handed. Um, it's warmer down up front, and those mountains way back there are quite purple. So we want to definitely pull out this warmth. Everything near us is warmer, richer, stronger, brighter, and everything farther away is less. So less color, cooler, um, lighter, softer, um, whatever. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get the sky going. Taking some white, and I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to grab some linseed oil because, like I said at the beginning, this was sort of a twilight time of day, so I'm okay with some of this underpainting showing through. So maybe I'll even grab some yellow ochre and a little touch of burnt sienna because I don't want it to be green. Burnt sienna will help just sort of neutralize it. So what I have here is sort of a blue-gray, okay? Just about like that. So let's add a little more white to that. And we're going to go with a really old world feel here. And remember too, I also said I wanted the clouds to come this way instead of this way because we've got too much of going on with this angle and the trees. So we're going to have the clouds countering that with this composition this way. Okay, so here we go with a very thin, thin layer of the sky. And for those who know me, I don't normally do thin layered skies, but we're playing with this and doing something a little bit different. Again, the job of an artist is not to just simply reproduce what we see in photos, but to translate by means of selection. So I'm selecting the, the theme, the idea of this painting to have sort of that tonalist quality that I remember when this photo was taken. I'm selecting a, this golden atmosphere to be the premise upon which I build this painting. It's not so much that way in the photo, but I remember the day, so let's play with it. Now, um, again, I'm reversing what was happening in the painting, or the photograph. Over there, it's bluer on this side and lighter over here, but I'm going to put a little bit darker blue over here and go with a lighter glaze, kind of lighter um, feeling over that way. Keeping it very thin and working out some of these in between the tree branches, just a little. I'll come back through with more information there. And you can see too, I'm adding more yellow ochre into here in my palette, a little bit more yellow ochre into that white, just for down here, because I do want to hit that up, just like I painted this a lighter tone in there, or rubbed it out. So you can see too that there's still some of that glow coming through, and I'm happy with that. So let's get over here now. Get some work done over here. 
again, keeping it thin, letting that sort of play through. I'll get into thicker paint and juicier brushwork down in here. That's just sort of my, my style and um, how I like to do things. I do like uh, that sort of that juxtaposition of thin, thick paint. Okay, so a little more yellow ochre and white to give me this sort of antique dusting cloud thing going on. Twilight. I to get to be Twilight. hope that you can see that without too much notify. Mm. Not this way, there's less glare. You know, I'm going to pull you guys even closer because I'm hoping that that might eliminate the some of the glare. Just kind of, you never know. Yeah, that's that's okay. Keeping my brushwork is very light. I'm just sort of gently, sort of tapping the surface of the canvas, and I go up, down, up, up, down, down, like across, like a cross hatch sort of. And that just gives it a, a kind of, to me, an interesting texture and vitality to some of those clouds and just kind of, we don't really know what's going on, but we feel it more than understand it. And I think that sort of makes it sort of evocative and fun. All right, so I said I was going to reverse that, so that means the clouds are going to be coming at us from this way. gentle. I don't need a lot of definition with these clouds because really there's just not a lot there. But remember as you do clouds they get smaller and smaller and more horizontal back there. So we'll just let some of that just sort of do its thing. All right, And I'm going to put a teeniest dot of alizarin crimson in this mixture that I already had. Just the smallest amount so that it's barely purple. And that'll be the shadow of the clouds right here. Just a little bit. Oh, that's hardly noticeable. Let's go a little more. Okay. Okay. Last thing I want my clouds to feel is boxy and heavy. So when I paint clouds, and this might sound like a bunch of psychobabble, but I really do try to think soft and light <laughs> and, and airy, and it just sort of subconsciously, um, you have a better chance of, of trying to get that light, airy feeling when your mind is in the game and you're thinking about it, you know? It's like if you were playing the piano and you had to play a song about clouds, you wouldn't pound on the keys, you know, it'd be light and, and airy. So, you know, I just try to think that. And it, obviously you have to use a degree of understanding. Some clouds are cumulonimbus and they're heavy and some are cirrus clouds and they're light and wispy and um, ultra stratus or more like this. And so you get all kinds of things in between. Understanding of the a little bit, you know, I mean, just basic clouds kind of gives you a good sense of maybe even where they might sit in the atmosphere and how they might act, you know, under different circumstances. All right, so let's get I'm taking a teeny bit of cad yellow and white, and I really just kind of want to hit this horizon up in here with some of that brighter sense of the sky and the sun and whatever. And again, pulling it up in here and among this tree, which I'll play with that some more. But 
the way over here too. Okay. Ew. Let's uh, move on. All right. I'm sure I'll go back and fuss with it a little bit more, but I think that that's okay for now. What I want to do real quick, I have these like crappy little brushes. This is a one inch, and it's you can see it's just like devastatingly horrible. But I like to have a few of these around because I can kind of come up in here and just sort of roughly lose some of the unwanted. Um, sometimes if you do some of these brushworks, they catch a glare, and I don't really want that. So I don't. I'm, I just kind of break it up a little bit with this crappy brush. I believe I paid um, less than 50 cents for this at Home Depot. So I keep a few of these kind of things handy. <laughs> um, will this video, yes, uh, good question. So uh, will the video be available to watch later? Yes, I, I, they're always up on my Facebook timeline and you can go into my albums and see all the videos there. I'll also end up sharing this on YouTube eventually too. So if you haven't gone to my YouTube channel, you can subscribe to that and be notified when anything is posted. All right, so I'm going back.